The Prohibition Amendment was ratified by Congress in January 1919 and was scheduled to come into effect one year later. It stopped the manufacture, sale or transportation of intoxicating liquors but it did not ban the purchase or consumption of alcohol. Intoxicating liquors was defined in 1920 as anything containing more than half a percent alcohol. Prohibition was enforced by the Internal Revenue Service. The idea of prohibition had been growing in support since before 1917 and from then on it only grew in popularity. Multiple groups argued for prohibition. Female reformers said there were clear links between consumption of alcohol and wife beating and child abuse. Industrialists like Henry Ford argued that drinking diminished output in the workplace. Many religious groups saw alcohol as the root of sin and evil. There was an idea that introducing prohibition would support the traditional American values. Prohibition was also encouraged by the war as many brewers were German and so some thought of prohibition as patriotic as they saw selling and drinking alcohol as a betrayal of the USA. Americans saw beer as especially German and so hated it all the more vehemently, naming it their Kaiser's Brew. So in September 1918 President Woodrow Wilson banned beer production until the end of the war. There was little opposition to this move and in 1919 the Prohibition Amendment was introduced. Hello. My name is Dick. I'm your typical English mug, and I will be discussing the catastrophic consequences of our American brother's bad judgment. Basically. In America they like their alcohol almost as much as their guns, and so even though it was banned, the people still wanted it, and would go through many means to get hold of it, so prohibition just drove alcohol underground, on a black market. This had some bad effects on society. Just like the birth of Donald Trump also had some bad effects on society. I am so funny. The effects were as follows. Effect 1. A new vocabulary developed. In this vocabulary, a speakeasy was an illegal bar kind of like a nightclub. Cheeky. A bootlegger was an illegal alcohol dealer. Bathtub gin was gin brewed at home. Moonshine was illegally made or smuggled alcohol. The list goes on but I do not want to bore you to death. Effect 2. Smuggling. The USA had more than 30,000 kilometers of coastal and land borders. Pretty hard to protect I know. Unless you build a wall. What a sick idea. On top of this doctors inside the country prescribed medicinal whiskey. Absolute legends. Effect 3. Speakeasies. There were more speakeasies than there had been legal saloons. Crazy hay. The owners of these paid off cops corrupt buggers. Effect 4. Health. Or rather the lack of it. Illegal alcohol was made by complete noobs who cut corners to get more dollar. This meant that it was pretty dangerous and so loads more people died or got ill from it. However, it is good to know that prohibition led to less alcohol related diseases at work and less road accidents. That is completely mad. Effect 5. The brewing industry got wrecked. In 1915 there were 1,345 breweries. In 1934 there were only 756. Hashtag, get absolutely wrecked and no scoped M8. These effects led to the end of prohibition. The noobs in government should have guessed what would have happened. Are they dumb? Franklin Roosevelt brought the end of prohibition in 1933. So wise. What a legend. What was the importance of gangsters during the Prohibition? Due to the Prohibition Americans were completely comfortable with buying banned items illegally which thus lead to the rise of a new age where gangsters were rife and ran riot in America. The most notorious gangster was Al Capone. He ran America's biggest gangster ring in the 1920s owning most of the access to illegal imports clubs, bars, restaurants and even law enforcers, with whom he bribed to keep his businesses expanding which increased his profits. He was eventually caught and convicted of tax evasion for $250,000 in 1932. 
The reason why Al Capone thrived in the 1920s was because Americans were comfortable with breaking the law, so now there was a market which gangsters like Al Capone thrived on and, crime became widespread throughout America. If you controlled alcohol during the prohibition you controlled everything around alcohol such as, the speakeasies, the clubs, the bouncers. This meant gangsters earned a lot from illegal trade and employed a lot of people, so if you were a gangster most likely you had a lot of money and were thriving during a mass economic boom of America. However, a lot of the money that was earned by gangsters wasn't going to the Inland Revenue Service, which is where it was supposed to go. However, the IRS had a small workforce, comprising of only 2,500 agents. So in order to put an end to the gangster crime in America during the Prohibition the IRS decided to weave their agents into the gangster networks. This did eventually work as by the start of the 1930s Al Capone was arrested as Elliot Ness and IRS agents had worked his way to the top of Al Capone's network and arrested, but this took a long period of time and in the end the IRS lost huge sums of money due to uncollected taxes. Overall gangsters showed to the United States government that when you attempt to ban items that a large amount of the population like, an illegal market gets created quickly which leads increased amount of crime where people like Al Capone monopolize the market and bribe a lot of civil servants to keep business going. This creates a huge amount of effort required by non-bribed law enforcers when they don't have the resources required to get on top of widespread crime. Also the amount of time it takes to eventually put an end to the crime is worth a lot more than enforcing the law in the first place. Gangsters showed that policies like the prohibition could never work which is why the United States government has never attempted to put a similar law to the prohibition in place ever again.